Butter chicken is a traditional North Indian dish that is creamy, rich, and packed with aromatic spices and flavor. Butter chicken or murg makhani is believed to have originated in a restaurant as a means to use up leftover tandoori chicken. The tomato gravy, butter, and cream proved to be a delicious way to soften the leftover chicken and keep it from drying out. Like all Indian dishes, there are countless versions with nuanced variations. Today we're going to show you our favorite recipe for this popular Indian classic. One of the things that makes butter chicken so tasty is garam masala, which is a rich blend of spices that's unique to most Indian households. Now, you can use store-bought, but we found creating your own spice blend makes the dish richer, smokier, and more aromatic. If you do use store-bought, just make sure to double the amount. Every Indian household has their own version of garam masala. For ours, we're using bay leaves, cinnamon sticks, cloves, cardamom pods, peppercorns, cumin seeds, coriander seeds, and nutmeg. We'll toast these spices for about one to two minutes until they're fragrant, but definitely not burnt. Doing this brings out their aromatic oils and intensifies their flavors. So please, really, don't skip this step. Once they're toasted, we'll let them cool and then add them to a spice grinder to create a fine powder. You don't have to buy a spice grinder. A coffee grinder dedicated to spices works just as well. A mortar and pestle also works, but that can be pretty labor intensive and you won't get as fine a powder. Quick tip, save whatever spices you don't use in an airtight container for future recipes. Next, we'll make ginger garlic paste. It's used in traditional Indian recipes for a smooth texture. You can also use store-bought for this. But again, when testing, we found fresh one by a long shot. For our paste, we'll use ginger root, garlic cloves, oil, and salt. We'll peel the ginger and blitz all our ingredients together until they form a smooth mixture. Don't forget to scrape the sides of your mixer as you go. Now it's time to marinate our chicken. You can either use chicken thighs or breast but we prefer chicken thighs because they are more flavorful and less likely to dry out. We've cut them into strips instead of cubes because strips tend to hold on to the sauce better, but you can really do whatever is your preference. For the actual marinade, you'll combine the ginger garlic paste and garam masala, turmeric, ground cumin, ground coriander, salt, fresh lemon juice, and Kashmiri red chili powder. This is an important spice because it gives the chicken its signature color and is not overwhelmingly spicy. And lastly, we'll add full fat Greek yogurt. We're using full fat because more fat equals more flavor, so don't try to skimp out with the non-fat variety. We also found that marinating with yogurt is key to getting creamy, tangy chicken, and it also keeps it more tender and moist compared to the chicken we made without the yogurt. We'll combine all these ingredients in a bowl and then add our chicken. Once the chicken is coated, we'll let it marinate in the fridge overnight. That might seem like a long time, but trust us, the yogurt will start to slowly tenderize the meat and the spices and aromatics will season the chicken throughout. But if you really can't wait that long, marinate it for at least three hours. Now, when it comes to cooking your chicken, there are a few ways to go about it. Traditionally, tandoori chicken is grilled in a tandoor, which is a large cylindrical oven made of clay or metal, filled with hot coals or wood fire. We found the best way to mimic the cooked flavor of a tandoor is to place the chicken on skewers and broil for 15 minutes. While our chicken cooks, let's make our gravy or sauce. In India, some people call it a gravy, some people call it a sauce, but whatever you call it, it's the star of the show. And it's what makes butter chicken, butter chicken. To begin, we have to choose our fat. Ghee is often used in Indian cooking. However, when we tested butter versus ghee, we found that while ghee made the gravy richer, butter made it creamier. So in a pan, you'll combine butter and oil on medium heat until the butter melts. Then add in cumin seeds, a cardamom pod, a bay leaf, four cloves, green chilies, and turmeric. Once you can smell all of these wonderful spices and hear them sizzle, add in a chopped onion and cook for about five minutes until it lightly browns. Then add some of that homemade ginger garlic paste and cook for another minute. Finally, add ground cumin, Kashmiri red chili powder, ground coriander, garam masala, and stir until well combined. Can you see a theme here? We use a lot of spices in Indian cooking. We use them in whole and ground form to layer the dish and reinforce the flavors. Next, we'll add in the tomatoes. 
They add substance and acidity to our sauce, as well as cut through the richness of the butter. We tested with both canned and fresh tomatoes, and surprisingly, we found the canned tomatoes were sweeter and more flavorful. This can really depend on where your fresh tomatoes come from, but we preferred the canned. Next, we're gonna let you in on a little secret to extra creamy gravy, cashews. A lot of Northern Indian dishes include nuts like cashews to add richness to a sauce. They can definitely be omitted, but when testing, we found they added a wonderful sweetness and lusciousness to the dish that just can't be replicated. So if you don't have a nut allergy, put them in. Trust us, it's going to be worth it. And finally, we'll add a pinch of salt and cook for 10 to 15 minutes until the tomatoes are a deep red color and the cashews are soft. We mean soft. If we don't wait for the cashews to cook down before moving on to the next step, we won't get that silky smooth sauce. So take your time, don't rush this part. Next, we'll transfer the spiced tomato mixture into a high-speed blender. Add half a cup of water and blitz until completely smooth. Now that our gravy is super smooth, pour it back into the pot, add more butter, because this is butter chicken after all, then sugar to balance the acidity, and finally the cooked chicken. Cook on low with the lid on for 10 minutes. This is going to allow the flavors in the sauce to develop and for everything to come together beautifully. Finally, stir in heavy cream and fenugreek. It's worth going the extra mile to find dried fenugreek at your local Indian market. It really balances the dish and adds a nice earthiness. Add a little more salt here if needed. You can thank us later for how delicious your kitchen is smelling. When it comes time to serve, there are a variety of options to plate with your butter chicken, like rice, onion kulcha, naan, roti, and paratha. We love to serve ours over basmati rice and top with fresh cilantro alongside some garlic naan. Finally, it's time to dig in. And the best way to do that is to take our naan and grab the chicken to create the perfect succulent bite. Butter chicken is one of those dishes that brings people together around the family table. It's a taste of home, comfort, and love. We hope you love it as much as we did making it for you. You can find this recipe and many more on tasty.co.